So hello and today on the Silly Vicar Show we're talking about Noah's Ark and our favourite Donald Trump. I'm going to be a war, I'm going to be a big pub war from USA to Mexico. I know it's really lots of miles but I don't care and also Mexicans are going to pay for it and it's going to it's gonna cost loads of taxes but guess what I don't care. I mean, it's So hello and welcome to the Silly Vicar Show. This week we're talking about Noah's Ark and oh, Chewie, <laughs> Chewie, yes. oh thank you, I've been trolled, <laughs> I've been trolled. And you may notice as well it's half term, which is why there's more craziness this week. So this week we're talking about Noah's Ark and we're talking about what it means for today because last week. We said that we know Noah's Ark is a myth because... It's a tell! Because at the end of the story, there was the tell about the rainbow. I have set my bow in the clouds. If you, if you missed the video, check it out. So, what's the point if it's all about ancient Sumerian gods? What's the point of even looking at it today? What, why should we care about that? Now, the Bible is all about telling stories that's the moral of the story. What's the moral of Noah's Ark? That's the question. And Noah's Ark, really, can be thought of to be about power. So my kids, because this half term, have done their own little story about power. What is it, Smithers? I worship you, Mr. Burns. Ooh. Excellent. was good wasn't it fair play they really tried with that so their archetype of power is mr burns now imagine for a moment if we found donald trump in 2000 years time nobody would care who donald trump is nobody would know who he is nobody would know who mr burns was but they are archetypes in other words they are types of powerful figures and we've seen donald trump before throughout history in all sorts of demagogues, they all pretty much say the same thing. So like Mr. Burns, we've seen loads and loads of Mr. Burnses. They are archetypes. And that's how the Christian church has always tried to understand stories like Noah's Ark, to use something called typology, to look for similar types of stories throughout history. And what they said was, there was a guy called Marcion, who was around uh, in the second century. And what he wanted to do was to get rid of all the Old Testament stories. Because he said, oh, they're just too violent. There's just too much of it. It's just, it's just too over the top. Get rid of it. But the Christian church then turned around and said to Marcia and said, no, what we should do is we should interpret the Old Testament through the type of Jesus. So we'd use Jesus as the ultimate revelation of God. And only understand these Old Testament stories through the lens of or the type of Jesus. So for Noah's Ark, for example, if you go into a church, you'll see that many churches are look like boats turned upside down. They've got roofs like that that look like boats that are turned upside down. And what the original church fathers said is the way to understand Noah's Ark is to think of the flood as baptism. And the ark, the thing that saves us, as the church. So that's why churches look like arks, look like upturned boats. But there's another way of understanding Noah's ark as well, which is more pertinent for today's world, really. Is Noah's ark is saying that there's real consequences for evil. Evil affects not just people, but the whole of the environment, the whole of society, the whole planet. So evil destroys relationships and it destroys the planet, the material world as well. 
Now at the moment, the story in Noah's Ark is that God warned not just Noah, but everybody said, he said, look, there's a flood coming, get on the ark. There's a flood coming, get on the ark. There's a flood coming, get on the ark. And nobody listened to Noah. Nobody cared what Noah said. At the moment, we have lots of scientists saying, Climate change, big flood. Climate change, big flood. Climate change, big flood. But are we listening? Are we listening to what the scientists are saying about climate change is going to bring flooding? And the real story of Noah's Ark for us today, really, the way we should interpret it today, is that when we are warned about floods, when we are warned about climate change, do we listen? So let us know what you think uh, about our interpretations of uh, Noah's Ark and our performances. And uh, if there's any other biblical stories you want us to look into and uh, explain what they mean, let us know in the comments. So thanks again and uh, see you next week when it's not half term. Less stress.